Good morning, church. It is good to be with you again this Thursday morning. I pray that the world is going well for you and that all in your life is is good. Um, I had a story I wanted to share with you to begin with. This um, this is in the scripture. It talks about the night that Jesus was betrayed by his disciple Judas and how Judas had turned in Jesus to the authorities because they were looking to arrest him. And after they'd shared the Passover meal together, they're out in the garden. And here approaches Jesus and his disciples, some guards from the palace, from the temple. And they're coming to arrest Jesus. And the disciples were not sure what to do about that. And in Matthew 26, 51, we read, Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, and he drew it, and he stuck the, struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. I chose that scripture because of the violence that's happening this week, and seems like every week these days, down in Uvalde, Texas, and Buffalo, New York, and then the list can go on and on and on. And this is a very difficult topic because all of us agree that little children should not be gunned down in their classroom along with their teacher. But we don't seem to agree on what it takes to fix the problem. And this is a very tough situation that we need to put some attention to. I think when there was a shooting at the grocery store in Buffalo, people rationalized that, well, there was hatred against the black race and that's why the men killed the people there. But no one can wrap their head around the idea that an 18 year old would have that much against these children. 19 children and two adults slaughtered in their classroom. As a people, I'm embarrassed. As a country, I cannot believe that we have not made an attempt to fix this problem. That we've not made an attempt to seek peace. That we seek common sense gun laws. We cannot continue going on like this as a country, glorifying violence an easy access to assault weapons without background checks, without training. We cannot continue to do that and continue to think that we're a peace-loving Christian nation. This confusion that people have that being a Christian also means that you have a right to carry a gun around is completely antithetical. Jesus told his disciple, put away your sword. For those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And he's true. That's exactly right. The more guns we have, the more that people die by gun violence. Admittedly, some of those people kill themselves. But they have an easy access to a lethal weapon that they know is designed to kill human beings. Years ago, I went through basic military training. And in that training, I was introduced to an M16 gun, long gun that the military uses. And it was explained to us that the 223 shell that was designed for the M16 gun was specifically designed to do the most damage to a human being. The only purpose of a 223 round was to completely destroy the person that was shot. And now these types of guns are in the hands of people all over the world, and especially in the United States, with no background checks, no safety training, no control whatsoever. And the only purpose of these guns is to kill another person. 
this cannot keep going on. I'm not against people owning guns for hunting and for sport. I used to hunt when I was a child. I'm not against hunting. I am against hunting people. We must push our legislators to make changes in the laws that really will force the crackdown of this type of thing. We must also improve mental health so that we understand when people are sliding down a dangerous path. We must do other things to help people to realize that easy access to guns is not the same thing as buying a toy off the shelf. And because it's fun to own does not mean it's right. I implore you to call your legislator, to write letters, because as I understand the majority of people in the United States want this to change. And I encourage you to be part of that. We need to come pray, we need to pray for answers, but we need to take action as well. I have hope that we can fix this. I have hope that we truly look at the lessons of Jesus Christ, that our hearts will change and will not try to lift up this idea of everyone having rights to own guns no matter what their condition or what their purpose is, is not in the least bit Christian. I'd like to share a song with you that I think will help us to center our thoughts and our minds on what it means to seek peace and reconciliation, but we also need to be responsible citizens that truly care for one another and love each other the way Christ loves us. The song is titled, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Come and find the quiet center In the crowded life we lead Find the room for hope to enter Find the frame where we are freed Clear the chaos and the clutter Clear our eyes that we can see All the things that really matter Be at peace and simply be Silence is a friend who claims us, cools the heat and slows the pace. God it is who speaks and names us, knows our being touches base. Making space within our thinking, lifting shades to show the sun. Raising courage when we're shrinking, finding scope for faith begun. In the spirit let us travel, open to each other's pain. Let our lives and fears unravel, celebrate the space we gain. There's a place for deepest dreaming, there's a time for heart to care. In the Spirit's lively scheming, there is always room to spare. There's a place for deepest dreaming, a time for hearts to care. In the Spirit's lively scheming, there's always room to spare. I pray that each of you take some action. Let your, let your heart be known. Let not those children and teachers that died in Texas and the shoppers in Buffalo and all the people around the country who be killed by senseless violence, let them not die in vain, but let their deaths be a, a impetus to make a difference in this world. Go in peace.